Awesome cast number 112, the Olympic edition, all that tech and social media. How's it going over there? And are we going to have to wait another four years for them to get it right? Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 112. We're here in Pittsburgh, PA, in the studio. I am your host, S Michael Sorg. <laughs> What's my name? What's my name? What's my name? Your name is Michael Sorg. On the couch with me, of course, oh, is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com, the place for all your video game pew, pew. news and commentary needs. Nerd, please. Nerd, please. That's my new thing. Yes. We need to make that happen. That's going to happen. We'll work on that. We'll yeah. work on that. Also with us is Rob De La Creta hey. of Ion Tank. I can say that now. That's so oh, yeah, awesome. You can totally say that if you want to. Sure. Go check them out. IonTank.com <laughs> where they make cool things like phone boosts that are bigger on the inside. You know, we decided this week that I had to come up with an actual job title. Okay. Um, what, were you, what, what were you telling people before? Uh, uh, Wrangler of Unicorn Magic. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Let me set, let me change your title. That is the greatest job title ever. Uh, well, like the joke that we made. The, 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 let me roll that back a second. So the, we do interactive stuff for trade shows and um, museums and things. Uh, so a lot of the stuff we do is sort of like hypothetically possible, but nobody's dumb enough to try it. And mm -hmm. we do that kind of stuff. And uh, so we, I always tell people that they're like, oh, how does that work? And like, honestly, it works because we spent way too much hour, too many hours, like beating our head up against impossible electronics and hacking the heck out of them to get them to work. But the short answer is unicorn magic. It's all powered by unicorn magic and a lot of hope and uh, the tears of children. Mm -hmm. They keep mm -hmm. them. You keep them in the shipping containers, don't you? Yes, we do. That's what they're actually full of. But Wait, the uh, children or the tears? <laughs> uh, it kind of goes hand in hand. It does, uh, but I had to. I, I actually, just thought you could pre-order tears online and have them shipped to you somewhere in my bag. Here. Yes, but the waiting period is ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> the waiting period for children's tears, insane. You wouldn't uh, believe it. But so uh, we had to, well, I've never tried to order children's tears before. Exactly. So. What are you doing? I Business. I actually, part. have some in this jerk sauce that I made somewhere. <laughs> hey, my screen looks good. Hey, there we go. I made some new business cards this week, and uh, we decided to put our, our titles on our business cards, which is why we wanted to have actual titles. So here I can actually... Boom! There it is. Is that metal? It's stainless steel. I nice. want one of those ones to go with the That's... wooden one that you gave me. Oh, yeah, you have you have my personal one, Gen 1. This is Ion Tank Gen 2. We had I made stainless steel ones for South by Southwest, too, but... These are these are new ones with our new uh, our new uh, uh, logo uh, uh, style guide and uh, font face. Nice. But um, yeah, so now I'm I'm uh, what I don't even know what my job title is. My actual job title is hardware development and integration, which isn't so much a title as much as a vague description of what I do because we couldn't think of anything better. Awesome. And also with us, also from InsertCoinToBegin.com, is Frank Chenoweth. At Fuzzwad on the Twitters. You yep. know it. Thank you for joining us on such short notice, Frank. Sure, no problem. He's just hanging out with his. Yep. yep. That's what I do. I have awesome cast on a thousand watts around sound, so I figured why not try it out <laughs> as a guest. I don't know if anybody saw. I've been uh, uh, sharing some Instagrams I saw from the show last week. Uh, of course, we had. Uh, 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 Almost Mr. Derby, uh, Norm Hill has been on last week giving a shot of what he sees on his end. And Frank has was watching the show on a giant 50-inch screen. There, I'll, I'll post another one. Okay. <laughs> uh, here, put it on sword. Put it on you, Mike. I'll put it on me? Yeah, post your picture. <laughs> That's beautiful. All right, all right, we'll have that retweeted here. <laughs> awesome. Uh, although I shouldn't say much because we did hook it up, so... Uh, so uh, wife of the show, Missy, can uh, uh, do her notes and stuff. We actually hooked it up to the 42-inch upstairs. So screening room, right? Right? Anybody? No? No. All right. All right, let's get right into it. Um, hey, uh, of course, uh, awesomecast.com. Uh, you can contact us. Uh, Rob, can they contact us at contact at awesomecast.com? 
Um, because uh, I tried contacting myself at that address and it didn't seem to work earlier today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Putting you on the spot. <laughs> now, uh, I know we've received uh, email. That's where Frank's emailed us before. But uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, every the, all systems are go on my end. It's okay, good. okay, I'll double check. Maybe I put the wrong address in or something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, hey, follow us on Twitter, of course. Um, at Awesome Cast, we're also on Facebook. Uh, we're also on uh, Google Plus. There's some people that comment with us on there as well. And uh, and uh, was there anything else I'm supposed to plug? Where's my Where's my notes? Where did my notes go? Where is my index card? There we go. Oh, hey, we're also available. Oh, we can also email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. That works, too. Uh, we're also available on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, and Stitcher. Uh, and I'm sure in other places we get distributed as well. Just look up for the Awesome Cast. You'll probably find us and a lot of other people that use the same name. But we're the better one. Easily. <laughs> we're the better easily, one. Easily. Easily. Have you seen oh. some of those other ones? There you go. We're the ones with the dot com, so that's that's what counts, right? All right, uh, Frank. First of all, you. I want to try to finish my my login so I can show this off. Uh, but but you sent us something uh, over on something called Fancy. What I send you from Fancy? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff on Fancy. All right, hold on here. It looks like an iPhone case that lights up. From what I saw momentarily. Oh, oh yeah, that's trying. A, yeah, it's an iPhone case. Uh, and I believe that I heard that they're making them for Android also, but it's a case that somehow takes your notification light, uh, works with the phone and it glows everywhere as you can see. Wait, so, so, so when I get a text, it's going to, it's going to glow. Yeah. That's your notification light. Ooh. I that correctly. That's the notification. So imagine that tweet you get in the middle of the night that just makes your room. glow. <laughs> How annoying would that be? My wife would love it. <laughs> I would be uh, destroying my phone every other day. That's when you do blackout times for notifications or something, or, so, or well, just like hide uh, it. I know in uh, in Mountain Lion there's the new uh, turn off notifications feature, and I'm sure somewhere in iOS six there's something. Yeah, there's the big old do not disturb button. Yeah, there is. There is. Um, well, yeah, in iOS six, so so we don't get that for a couple months here. Yeah. Like you know what the uh, the at least in the probably our audience the best application for this is. Um, I remember back in the day when I played video games, go to like land parties and stuff. My girlfriend would text me, and uh, my phone was on a table face down. I had no idea that there was anything there. Anybody had called me because I was too busy poning noobs. So if my phone lights up, then you know, <laughs> a little more to it. Yeah. yeah. That is probably the greatest application for this phone case. Yeah, I mean, there are, and there are plenty of devices and docks and stupid chunks of garbage electronics out there that um, try to take advantage of the RF interference that happens when you get a phone call, where, like, or at least what used to happen. Remember back in the day, you get a phone call and you're standing next to a speaker and it would make these amazing sounds? Uh, but try, try over the weekend when I was in the neck of the woods where uh, we were on edge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wherever I'm like, why is this never makes sounds? I look, I had like barely any reception, so that's still a thing. Yeah, um, yeah. but yeah. yeah, there's plenty of devices that try and do that. This is just that, but without the RF interference garbage, that doesn't really happen too much anymore because speakers are now shielded. Yes, yes. Um, sometimes not a lot of equipment. Um, Awesome, awesome. I, you know, kind of along that line, uh, I met this other guy uh, at Steel City Con. We had a booth down there. We were uh, hawking some wrestling DVDs, as we usually do. And I met this guy named Malachi West. And, I, and I'm sorry, apparently I linked the mobile site on this one, uh, but you can get right to the pictures. This guy does Ninja Turtles artwork, right? So um, I think those are figures he might have made. There's some pictures. Here's an iPhone case. These are holsters that he's making. Uh and he made this thing with the turtles and the ooze. Um, like, you know, sorry guys on the audio. Um, and here's some other holsters that are like turtle shells that he made. And they actually have LEDs in them that light up. You can see in the picture. That's so, actually really the cool. The chat room can't see the picture because it's far to the uh, too far to the left. Okay. No, no, that's you can't see it in the chat room because you're monitor. Um, and there's sure? a TG, TG, yes, there's a TGRI uh, uh, setup that he made. Um, so it's him flipping us off. Um, so, <laughs> so Malachi West, he's supposed to have a booth uh, at the next Steel City Comet in December. Um, really cool guy and had a really cool, and he had a few of them that, that he showed off to me. 
Um, I don't think he should be our friend if he's giving you the finger. He's giving somebody the finger, but he's wearing a he's wearing a Thundercat shirt, so that makes him. Cooler. But it doesn't, ma- sure that doesn't it mean does. anything. Sure, it does. All right, let's get into um, some talk about the Olympics. That's a thing that's going on right now in London, guys. Um, and there's a lot of tech going Wait. on with it. What 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 are the Olympics? What are the Olympics? <laughs> See, Chachi, the Olympics are when the many nations from around the world get together and they play games. And they also light a big fire. Like Tetris? No, not, not Tetris, although they should. Let's be honest, the only important thing about the Olympics is women's beach volleyball. Uh, <laughs> no, women's boxing. Women's boxing? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know. That. Wow. I Actually, I don't know if they do women boxing in the Olympics. I was going to say, I was not aware actually, there was a woman. Actually, I was watching women's judo this morning. Then oh, gotta be how was that? Boxing. Yeah, if they do judo, then there has to be women's boxing. Yeah, I'm out of the loop because I don't bleep, bleep, bleep have cable. So <laughs> No, that's fine. I don't have cable either. I've been watching oh, I've been watching the over-the-air feed and um, a little bit whenever it works. Uh, you the, know what's really irritating? What? So before the Olympics happens, NBC... Is all you can watch NBC.com. You'll be able to watch the Olympics for free, totally for free. It's going to be free. We promise it'll be free, free, free. So you're like, oh, sweet. It's time for the Olympics. NBC.com. Olympics live. Verify that you are a subscriber. Verify not only that you are a subscriber of a, of a, of a cable company that carries NBC, but that you pay money for the extra package that carries NBC specifically. Uh, MSNBC and CNBC, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, if you have the, like the basic cable package or whatever, which technically gives you NBC, or if you have a friend that has a login, that's what sure. they're willing to share. Yeah, but it, so it, the basic cable thing doesn't include it. Is the thing. Uh, Miss Bossy No Pants is in the chat. She says that they most definitely have women's boxing in the Olympics, and NBC, and NBC effed up these Olympics. <laughs> yeah. um, let us count the ways, shall we? Her her opinion has <laughs> dropped of, uh, of us since we spent five minutes discussing all the women's sports that we. Like to watch. <laughs> I'm sure they have. Um, so okay, first we are of, just a bunch of sexist pigs. First of all, the, also before we get into real Olympic okay, news, okay, okay, I would just like to point out that I learned something this year what? from watching the opening ceremonies. I didn't realize that they had a category for people who don't have a country. Oh yeah, yeah. I had no idea that and was a thing. That means that oh, you yeah, watched well, the it's... entire hour and a half procession. Oh of no, countries. no, no! I was flipping back and forth between. Uh, the Buckos game and the opening ceremonies and just happened to have caught the four people in the Olympics this year without a country. One one was training in Flagstaff, Arizona. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you uh, yeah see? Who's a real hero? See? Who's that? That person who walked out in a sweatsuit with the India team and they can't figure out who it was to figure out why she was with them. I didn't see that. <laughs> yep. Okay, let's... <laughs> Uh, let's get to all the right the real news. news well first of all you know of course we're talking about the streaming uh, i logged in yesterday in the middle of the day and i there was actually an internal error in my app so i couldn't even bring up my women's volleyball um but it did work a little bit later when i was in a, a coffee shop downtown and just brought it up on my phone and watched a little bit of women's volleyball i would watching like a to bit state for the record the yep. only olympics i've watched this year was men's gymnastics Okay, but you but you didn't watch the whole thing. I'm actually typing this into the chat room right now. Um, the men's team gymnastics because I was watching that last night, uh-huh. and they left. That NBC decided not to show my favorite part of men's gymnastics, which was the uh, the rings. The part where they get changed in the locker room is that your favorite part? Oh, that too. But you know, I I didn't want to put that on the air. But no, the mm-hmm. rings where you know people just hold themselves up by just keeping their arms out and. Oh, yeah. Stuff. They didn't show that. They showed the pommel horse, they showed the vault, and they showed uh, the uh, just the open floor gymnastics, but they didn't show the rings. Are you sure that wasn't over on, like, CNBC or something? Uh, well, I don't see why they would have done that, because they were <laughs> saying that they were showing the entire uh, men's U.S. gymnastics team go through yeah. their uh, team routines and completely left that one out. Yeah, there's a well. The, 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 there's been a lot of like, uh, uh, you know, complaints about uh, NBC's coverage. One for one thing, um, especially when they had the uh, creator of the uh, World Wide Web on Friday night at the opening ceremony, and everybody completely played stupid. Okay, maybe they weren't playing. 
uh, about who he was. Um, you know, stuff like that. Of course, the delays. Uh, I think, like, wasn't NBC's account itself, like the NBC Olympics account, tweeting about everything live when they were going to be showing everything later that night? No, they had scheduled tweets. Okay. Well, um, if, if you're talking about the opening ceremony, most people got to watch it live. Uh, people over on the West Coast were on a six-and-a-half-hour delay. So the NBC Twitter account for the Olympics was putting out uh, all the different stuff and probably some of the just mindless gibberish that Matt Lauer and uh, Meredith Vieira were just blithering on about uh, that made no sense and just kind of ruined the opening ceremony, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. Probably kept posting all that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, they're watching infomercials for ways to grow their manhood over on the West Coast because it's not prime time. And then six hours later, then the, uh, then the Olympics show up for them. Yeah, it, it was really, it, it felt like I was watching the Macy's Parade, but it was like somebody, I don't know, it, it's like they didn't, they didn't do their research or ev on everything, or they didn't care to, or they had seen enough of it, and were just letting us know at this point. Um, so I, I think it was kind of a sad showing. But, um, but the great thing about it is the, uh, the, the uh, Twitter parodies that have been popping up lately, like NBC Delayed. Uh, breaking. Yes, that's fantastic. Millions in the street in the Berlin Wall is torn down. David Hasselhoff leads crowd in song. Um, you know stuff like that. Uh, and, and that's been that's been a really fun account uh, to to watch. But also this other thing where a journalist gets suspended from Twitter. He got it back today. He did get it back today. I, I yes, saw. Yes, he got um, it back, but no explanation why he was suspended in the first place. Well, I, basically he he was suspended after. Um, Let's see if I can find the quote here. Um, I thought he shared a uh, an internal email. He sh he shared it. Well, he shared a corporate email. A uh, corporate email that's posted on multiple websites and has been on multiple websites for more than I think six months, which is uh, Twitter's basis for saying that something's existing on the internet prior. Hmm. So he posted something that was already available on the internet to anyone who Googled it, hmm. and. Then they said that it was a private email address, and that's why they pulled him down. Uh, to complicate things, whenever he started inquiring to both Twitter and NBC, NBC said that Twitter had brought it to NBC's attention and asked if uh, they, if Twitter wanted, if NBC wanted Twitter to shut it down. NBC did not seek this guy out since he posted the email address. Yeah. Yeah, so so it was like it, Twitter was the one raising the sting. Now, Twitter, of course, I believe is partnering with NBC and the Olympics to provide all the social media stuff that we're hearing about on the shows. Uh, yes. So they're looking out for their interests. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, and, and there's a quote here from uh, the journalist uh, Guy Adams is his name. He's a correspondent for a London paper, The Independent. I'm sorry, I thought he was from L.A. Um and he said it, he's a, it, it's quite worrying that NBC, whose parent company are in an Olympic sponsor, that's, of course, Comcast. We're seeing those, ad, those ads all over the place if you're watching in prime time, uh, are apparently trying and, in this case, succeeding in shutting down the Twitter accounts of journalists who are critical of their Olympic coverage. So, And, and like I said, he, he, he went up today. Last I, uh, last I knew, there's been no rhyme or reason about why it went up or anything like that, right? Yeah. Now, uh, insert coin to begin. You guys have been a uh, victim of <laughs> victim of uh, uh, Twitter takedowns. Did you get any feedback at all from Twitter itself? Nope. We got uh, form responses from their support. One of those like these. You there. This was one of the. These are the many reasons that you could have been shut down. You could be one of them. No. Not even that. No. No. I, I'm talking. We got shut down didn't get a reason as to why we were shut down. Mm -hmm. And then upon uh, fighting it through their help desk, whatever, you, if you can call it that, um, <clears throat> we got, oh, well, uh, this is the information you gave us. We're going to look into this. Uh, if you respond to this email within two hours, failure to re respond to this email within two hours will uh, result in closure to this issue because we will assume that it's resolved 
Yeah. So, uh, Twitter, worse than Google in their human responses, <sighs> apparently. No, it wasn't a human response. It wasn't even a human. That's, that's why I said. Well, Google's, well, Google's getting better. They have, they have a little bit of customer service because they're getting more face-to-face with people. Um, so, <coughs> and on top of that, we're asking everybody in London, please don't send your messages and your pictures and your texts and everything during the game. Because it's making the equipment fail for the Olympics. <laughs> Frank, Frank, you've been following this, right? Oh, yeah. That, that was one of the most... Just, it, it's just comical that that happened. <laughs> no, no, did like, you... you, you like, heard, there's nothing else to it. You, you heard what was part is, The best part is, in their announcement, they said only send a tweet when it is urgent. What is an urgent tweet? Every single tweet that I send out is an urgent tweet. Listen, everybody needs to know what kind of sandwich I'm having while I'm watching the the biking, uh, the cycling competition right now. I have thousands right now. of I have followers. so many friends in America that need to know this. I have they thousands. need to see this sandwich. This slice of bacon is crucial to their existence. Exactly. I have thousands of, fi- of followers that need to know the moment I take my pants off. Exactly. Pants status important. Yes. What do you what do you think about this, Rob? I bet it's dumb. There's not much to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it, it's an amazing, fantastic screw up, and I really hope several departments get fired over it. <laughs> I feel like this isn't just this is a basically what happened is somebody passed a memo around whoever is in charge of their their Twitter account or whatever, um, doesn't understand things. So they said this thing that probably had nothing to do with whatever was in said memo. And now they look like idiots. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, now supposedly this is, they, they are, they are having an equipment failure because of the overload of the networks there. Uh, specifically the GPS, uh, responsible for some stuff, uh, surrounding the cycling competition. Like, I don't know if you watch it. There's like that one car that follows them on the camera mounted. And I know it was going a little wonky and, 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 and the ability for the, um, uh, the commentators to follow what's going on. Cause I, I guess they have some kind of GPS tracking thing, uh, to see where everybody is along, along the route, uh, to see, you know, see who's winning. Um, so apparently that's failing, which means they can't commentate and they can't deliver the event to the rest of us because you're all tweeting about bacon. So um, it's basically just sort of Ted Stevens reincarnated. I didn't get my email because the tubes are clogged. Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, that's what happens when you build the whole thing on a public network that uh, that is full of everybody from the world uh, with all their smartphones. Shows how developed we are that we're clogging a network like this. Mm-hmm. Worldwide, um, hey, everyone, everyone with a Twitter account who's at the Olympics, give yourself a pat on the back. There you go, there you go. You're bringing NBC down, and well, and whoever else, I guess. I keep keep forgetting NBC is not the only one broadcasting this thing. You know, it's just it's just that's our our public uh, face of this scapegoat. Thing. Exactly, our public scapegoat of this thing. So, uh, has anybody else been using the apps or anything like that? I've been using the, uh, I think it's the official Olympic app. Okay. The, uh, yeah, NBC Olympics, uh, which takes like a year to load. Yes. Um, has per- has performance it. updates every day. I would tell you about the features, but it's still loading. Yeah, yeah. It's presented by GE, in case you... And City. Uh, and City. There it is. Oh, an update oh, is hey. required. Oh, I got push notifications? I don't think so. I will now be redirected to the iTunes app store. <laughs> and they're requiring the updates. Fantastic. Well, the wow. app that I've been using has been working. Okay. It is a, uh, it's an app that doesn't really have news stories unless you dig to find them. All it does is show you, um, it gives you a grid, lets you pick the sport, or it lets you pick the athlete, and it tells you what they did. It tells you the times, and it's just simple. It was actually uh, presented by Samsung in partnership with the Olympics, and it's worked flawlessly. And I tell it's, you, I tell you what, when it works, the the live extra is the one that you uh, live extra is, is pretty much the brand for everything. Where we were talking about earlier, where you have to register your uh, carrier and all that stuff 
uh, in order to get into it. Uh, they have the app on iPhone, iPad, and I'm sure a few other things. And, and on, on the website, there's that section. Uh, it's worked pretty good. Um, let's see. Let's see. I have the options right now. Everything should be mostly done. We have uh, beach volley volleyball, men's and women's. Maybe we'll get lucky. Oh, it logged me out, and I need to go find my provider information again. Whoops. That's that's fun because you know that's a that's that's something I can remember. Yeah, um, I got to reset my password yesterday trying to use the MBC uh, online thing mm -hmm. just because they they needed me to ask. I'm like, oh, I forgot I even had that login. Exactly. Exactly. So, <clears throat> whoa, excuse me. All right. Uh, anything else Olympics wise that we need to cover? Nope. Going once, going twice. All right. How about this week in Kickstarter, guys? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this was a cool one. It's a next gen iPhone dock that offers robotic motion. This seems like right up your alley, Rob. Um, yeah, it's a neat thing. Um, let me I'll bring a video up here. Let's start a page again. So, uh, for those uninitiated, what this is, it's a little, uh, a little disc with a thing on it. Put your phone into it. Plug your dock into it. Interfaces with an application on the phone. And it allows the phone to use the front-facing camera um, or whatever to track the motion. And then there's a little servo motor uh, inside of the, the, the dock that will rotate the phone. And basically, so track your motion and, and keep an eye on things. So this is useful, hypothetically, for meetings and baby pictures and birthdays uh they raise seven hundred and two thousand dollars of their one hundred thousand dollar goal over five thousand two hundred twenty seven backers with uh goals like uh pledge 95 bucks and you get a thing sounds pretty decent um so my my thing with this because like one of their demo videos is a um is a is a time lapse because there's plenty of things that do this exact this exact thing, but for uh, more professional level uh, cameras of all different kinds. They're usually fairly expensive. There's actually a a really clever one for um, uh, hybrid SLRs, which uses a string to pull a camera along. If you've ever seen a time lapse in which uh, it looks like the camera is traveling along a line, it's usually on a set of rails. Um, and those rails are very long and thus very expensive, and it's attached to a little tripod mount. And this other thing was a base, and you could basically have a piece of string as long as you wanted it to be, and this little base would pull your camera along that string. Super cool thing. But it accomplished the same thing, but it was for bigger cameras, so it's like $500. This thing, uh, 95 bucks if you pledge, uh, you get a thing. And they said retail is $130, which is very cool. Niche application, most people are not going to have a use for it. It absolutely has no place on an office meeting table. I will guarantee that. <laughs> um, it's just kind of a cool thing to mess around with. I don't think it really has a professional application. Um, it definitely has an artistic application. I love this. Um, I love it in this demo video. Uh, we're seeing, uh, for those that can't see it, um, they're showing like on an iPad, you're seeing what the camera's seeing and you're actually able to swipe to move the camera in the direction. Like there's the birthday party and it's like off tilter and you swipe down and now we look down at the cake. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's kind of cool. Um, and uh, I don't know, maybe there will be, you know, some people thinking outside the box for this thing for some useful applications. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are going to use it. But the thing is, like, we're still having people explaining to people that you can't hold your phone vertical when you're making a video and then upload it to YouTube. I don't know, man. Tout's killing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tout, Tout is making that like a reason to do it because then you watch the video back on Tout on your phone and it fills the screen. So it, it's like medium to medium. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I know it looks stupid for the rest of us, but like that, like, it seems to make it okay. But other than that, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. But, I mean, I can see something like this, like, working in, like, a FaceTime, you know, sort of thing. It's a hands-free FaceTime. Like, maybe some people can't touch it, you know? And how many people are actually using FaceTime? What's that? How many people are actually using FaceTime? Good question. Mm, Good question. Theory? Is that it? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, it's really a special case. Like, I keep forgetting about it. So, um... But yeah, uh, and how are they doing? They're doing. Um, they bring up their page. I think. I think they got it already, right? Yeah, they got it. Their their funding uh, ended, and they're all set. 
All right, and let's see, they've exceeded the 1,000, uh, 100,000. Um, it's actually funded in April, so this is uh, kind of an old story. Okay. okay. Um, it, it was supposed to be delivered in June, so I guess the question is if anybody got their stuff, but. All right, and also uh, Google Fiber. Have you guys been reading up on this? Yeah, a friend of mine go, lives in Kansas City. Oh, uh, go Kansas City. Oh, you, you go visit uh, Kansas City for a job, don't you? Uh, well, I've been there once before, and I'm actually I'm going to be there in uh, four weeks. Nice, nice. Um, so uh, basically, Google Fiber uh, it started to get rolled out. Of course, Kansas City was you know remember last year Google uh, was uh, uh, allowing cities to campaign to see who was the first to get their uh, experimental Google Fiber uh, program, and uh, they announced some of the uh, details of what they are going to ro ro roll out in Kansas City area. Um, Kansas City, Kansas, right? Uh, Kansas City, Kansas, and Kansas City, Missouri oh. are next to each other and technically the same thing. Oh, okay. So it is like the entire thing. It's Kansas City, yeah. It, Kansas, <laughs> Kansas City is Kansas City. So, okay. So it, basically, it's going to be a TV service and internet. Kind of like, it seems like what we expect from Fios, from Verizon in the area here. Um, but more so. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be TV. They, they don't have everybody signed on, but I think it's kind of expected that they will have like ESPN, HBO, AMC, a couple other ones aren't aren't signed up as, as of now. Um, you're you're going to have no monthly bandwidth caps, no overages. It comes with one terabyte of storage through Google Drive. Uh, Google Fiber also... Um, they're also going to have uh, DVRs that are going to have two terabytes of storage for up to 500 hours of HD shows. And I believe they said eight shows at, at once can record. It's basically like you have the one box and then that box connects out to the rest of the TVs in your home. Kind of we've seen that from I think Dish Dish uh, Dish Network had like a you know a core box and you can do a second TV to it. And I think some other other others may be doing something similar to that, too. Um also, uh, your con your remote control, a hey, Google Nexus Seven. Yeah, and they yeah. they just give you a Nexus Seven. Everybody gets the Nexus Seven. It says here, here you go. This is your remote. Um, don't lose it. And uh, let's see, a uh, three hundred dollar construction fee to get the fiber installed in your house. After that, uh, there will be uh, two kinds of packages. One hundred twenty dollars a month includes a gigabit plus TV package with the uh, terabyte storage, internet, single single lump of all channels in a single bundle so they're not tearing this thing um yeah. and the 70 dollar a month one is the uh, uh gigabyte only package and i think there are options i think i heard there are options for free internet through this i think so yeah like something about like uh seven years or something like that it's like a lower one uh like maybe like five five megabytes or something like that which is still substantial i mean that's tell me that's more than enough just to get around the internet uh, maybe even to do your Netflix and everything. Uh, interesting though, they're only doing, they have basically, they have a site you can go to if you're in Kansas City. And uh, they need, I believe, 10% of the people in your dedicated neighborhood to pre order this by a certain date. I think September is the date. And, uh, and then by then they will announce whether you have it. You have to drop $10 for the pre order. And they're really kind of making. The people in the area kind of I don't know, go to door to door or go campaign for this. So yeah, I mean it, the so one of the reasons that Kansas City got this is because the cost to Google to implement it was very low because the uh, the city development wise was in a position to accept this sort of infrastructure. Whereas even though um, if you remember back when people were campaigning, Pittsburgh was actually we were in the top cities to receive this. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a little thing that basically said, no matter how many votes you get, we're going to take financial considerations and yada, yada. And we have to work with local government to make sure that this will actually be a thing. And even though, you know, Pittsburgh City Council said like, yeah, we're up for this. This will be awesome. They didn't say, oh, and we're going to pay for it because that's what Kansas City did. Um, because if you look at the numbers, I think it was actually between us and uh, maybe Chicago. Mm -hmm. But the cost of implementing this sort of thing in the streets of Chicago would have been astronomical. Um, so they put it in Kansas City. But the problem is, obviously, Kansas City 
not a, I mean, there's plenty of tech in Kansas City, but it is not a tech hub by any stretch. Yeah. So you're the one nerd in your neighborhood and you really want this thing. Google has now made it your responsibility to go educate everyone in your neighborhood why Google is a good thing and why they should sign up for this thing. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how that goes. And, and uh, Ciro's uh, pointing out you still need to pay the three hundred dollars uh, for the free service, like for the install fee. So and, and that's that's interesting they're doing that way because I know with FiOS they pretty much eat the cost. I, I heard something that, that one time a figure, and this might have been when they're just rolling it out down in Texas. Uh, that was about fifteen hundred dollars for them to install the FiOS system in your house. Like they have to run the line out uh, from the pool. And uh, and you get a, a box, you know, in here and a backup battery and everything like that. Yeah, it's right up there. Um, and and uh, to be fair, on a three hundred dollar fee, if you consider somebody who has the the cheapest internet you can get through Comcast right now, which is uh, they they spec it much lower than it actually is, at least for me. But uh, I get like twenty six down and something like five or six up, which is plenty. And I'm paying fifty six dollars a month for that, which puts it at six hundred and seventy two dollars a year. Mm-hmm. 300 bucks for what seven years of internet or whatever yeah and, and we haven't seen a full like well we've seen what they have but it's not entirely a full tv lineup like you would get and that's partly probably why they have the one here's all the channels that we have to offer so, i don't even have a tv okay <laughs> exactly exactly um but still for 70 bucks i mean it's still you know beats the hell out of what i'm getting out of fios you know i'm not that we're really who's going to get that gigabyte used in the long run um, but still, just, just to know you have that headroom, you know, that I could run, like, how many Skype connections and not even put a chunk in that. That's, that's where it gets interesting. So, uh, what do you think about this, Frank? Um, uh, I'm sorry, I actually stepped out. Uh, oh, <laughs> no, you so, left. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a ninja like that. Um, uh, what, the, uh... The Google Fiber system. Uh, I like the fact that they're, uh giving the Nexus 7 as the remote because, like, that's the one thing that a lot of people are, I, like, well, at least I tried to do. Uh, Verizon has the Fios remote available for Android and I'm also assuming iOS, which I would love to be able to use, so it's just one less thing I need to pick up Mm -hmm. so that I can control everything from my phone, but it's absolutely terrible. But the fact that that's the way that Google's going right from the get-go, that there is no other control that you might have to use, that's nice. The three hundred dollars to get it installed, that is steep. That's I I don't know. That's <laughs> that'd be a hard sell. Kinda makes up, hey, you think about it, you got that Nexus seven, that covers two hundred dollars of the cost, right? Well, that's true. But what about the people who already ordered their Nexus seven? Yeah. It's like, do you want the second one now? But yeah, why um, not? then you have two controllers. Yeah. There you go. All right. On that note, I think it's time. Let's toss, toss it to Chachi. Wait, what? What? Is what are that, we doing? Hey, remember that thing we talked about? Yeah, It's time did. for that thing we talked oh, about. Man. Chachi. Well, of course, it's their coin to be, begin. Uh, they got their show, Let's Play, but they don't really talk much about news. So I want to give them a spot here on the show to uh, uh, tell us uh, what you guys are talking about this week on the, uh, on the site. We talk about news all the time. I am not sure where you're going with this. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, so, uh, if, if you remember, two weeks ago we talked about the Ouya uh, device. It's the Ooh, Android, yeah. the Android-based uh, gaming console that broke pretty much every Kickstarter starter record in existence. Um, as of right now, they're sitting at five point nine million dollars with eight <laughs> days to go. And one of the questions that we asked is whether or not huge companies would get behind something like this. And mm. that question has been answered. Yeah, um, a lot of news this week. Yeah, on, um, on live, the online video game, uh, the service player, whatever you want to, re- whatever you want to call it, uh, announced that uh, it will be available at release of the U- Ouya, which is a huge thing by itself. Um, but then you go into specific companies backing this device and uh and specifically or specifically square enix uh the final fantasy creators has announced that with launch of the device final fantasy 3 will not only be available for this device but it will be updated so that 
the graphics are made for its HD format. Nice. Nice. So, I mean, right there, you have not only uh, the launch game specifically for the Ouya, but you have a, a widely popular gaming uh, service that doesn't require you to have individual consoles to play. Uh, but now you have arguably one of the biggest, most famous game companies there is saying, you know what? We're with you. So, I, I, I mean, it, it answered every question that we pretty much had. <coughs> so it's got the backing. It's definitely got people going to have this in hand by the time it comes around in March. Yeah. It's looking really promising to actually be a nice alternative platform. It is. It's a nice small device. They released... Uh, the final pictures of it. Mm -hmm. It's a nice small device. The controller is nice and smooth, and it kind of looks like a mashup between the PS controller and the Xbox controller with a touchpad. Uh, it has it has the two directional pads. It has or two joysticks. Uh, the directional pad, the four multicolored buttons, and the touchpad in the center. It will probably have a couple of. Uh, triggers on top to nice. match everything else nice nice android so, based and wow so i mean it, it, it's getting more support than anyone could have possibly wished for awesome awesome anything else from uh insert coin to begin no it's pretty much the biggest awesome. the biggest the biggest news this week frank as what do far you, as uh gaming goes what uh frank what do you think about the support do we always getting as a big Android I think guy. I think it's fantastic because it's a good, just simple system, I think. It it looks well designed. It's it's a nice looking system. It's not something where like you look at it and you go, oh, that control is kind of like odd looking. It's a good looking system. People are getting behind it, so I don't know. I think that it's gonna be a huge success. I th I think I think in a year or two we're gonna be seeing that build as a uh, as a system that games are released on the same way we see for the Xbox or the PlayStation. Excellent. Excellent. Rob? Uh, it's another mobile platform. Woo! <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it's not it's, a, but it's, it's not a literally, cute. literally, like another phone that was put out that runs Android, but this one plugs into your TV. And even more segregated. Nerd, even, please. even more segregated. Stop. It's not another phone that you hook up to your TV. It's I know it's literally not a phone, but it's No, as you just said it's a it's literally another mobile device that you hook up to your TV. Hang on there, kiddo. Uh, okay, so every <laughs> every page on the internet is considered uh, mobile development. Okay? okay? Regardless of, the, of if it's used in a mobile platform or not. What I'm saying is that this is another mobile platform environment. And as far as the market is concerned, this is like having another phone, but this one plugs into your TV. I disagree. As in, <laughs> so every piece of Android hardware that gets put out is different. That's why there's so many problems, as we've talked about many times before, with all the different versions of Android OS. I don't know. This and isn't this, this, this isn't just a piece of hardware, but the screen is your TV, and it doesn't make phone calls. This isn't this, just Android. This is more like a Kindle Fire. You know, despite, it's difference from other other Android devices. I think, despite the the software on the device, it's a video game console. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. I mean, because I don't think they're going to have like a Google Play Store. No, on this right. Thing. Accessibility wise, if I'm a mobile developer, yeah, I'm developing applications for phones. I've already made the investment into Android. Okay, say, hey, are you going to develop for the Ouya? Nobody is going to say, are you going to develop for Xbox? That's not a thing. That doesn't exist. Um, from Ciro, he says he thinks it needs to get serious games out there other than Square Enix in order to be taken uh, as a new alternative console. Really, I think that's what OnLive brings to it because you get stuff like, you know, automatically like Batman Arkham Asylum, like Assassin's Creed, you know, everything that they carry, which is basically console games that aren't dedicated to one console or the other at this point. Um, I, I think I think that that's what brings it on. It, it, the, the Gaikai, I think that... I wouldn't be surprised if we see that as well come to this thing. And that, that would uh, flush out the rest of the library. So, um, anything else, guys? Uh, yeah, I have two stories. Okay. One I'm telling you about beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, the Nexus Q. We're going to fight over this, Rob. The no, little ball that's almost no, good. 
I don't um, care about the fight. Okay. <laughs> Where's the one you yacht? <laughs> Go ahead, Nexus Q. What's going on with the Nexus Q? <laughs> okay, that uh, nice little Android based, and you know, you can say it's another phone. They have it running Cyanogen Mod 9, so I guess you could say that it is a phone that you plug into your TV if you want to be specific that way. But, anyways, uh, a lot of people thought that $300 was pretty steep for the asking price. Well, Google got that feedback. And they heard that, so they're delaying the Nexus Q. And I read the announcement letter that they sent out to everyone, and it does not say when it is going to come out. But for the people that did pre-order a Nexus Q, who signed up and said, I'm going to spend $300 on the jukebox where people are going to inject their music into my life, they're getting theirs for free now. So, nice. Yeah, good for them. And the other bit of news is the FCC is not Verizon's best friend right now. Uh, let me see where it is. Okay. Uh, based on the C-block rules for the mobile networks, uh, can't find the exact thing, but um, the way that Verizon was having the Google Play Store remove, well, not remove, but hide any tethering apps from anyone using a Verizon phone, so that you could say, well, I don't want to pay Verizon for tethering. I'm just going to go download an app of my own. Um, they aren't allowed to do that because they're essentially creating a monopoly uh, that way. They're limiting um, the choice of the users, which, according to these guidelines, uh, the users have the right to choose uh, what service they use for whatever. So now all those uh, tethering apps that were previously removed from the Google Play Store are going to be coming back. On top of that, Verizon is being told to pay $1.25 million to the U.S. Treasury uh, as their punishment for that. And also, um, let me see, uh, the story from GigaOM, which I've, I've never heard of that site before. Uh, GigaOM, Giga I think it's called. GigaOM is how it's pronounced. It's kind yes. of a big deal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> GigaOM. I'm reading this from Droid Life. It says, GigaOM is also reporting that this new FCC ruling will force Verizon to offer tethering plans for free to tiered data customers. While that's sort of already happening with their share everything plan not necessarily new, this report suggests that there isn't a way for Verizon to stop unlimited customers, uh, people grandfathered into their unlimited plans. Uh, there's nothing to stop the unlimited customers from doing this as well. Now, that remains to be seen from Verizon. And obviously, they aren't going to start advertising that for the unlimited users to go ahead and tether all they want. But, you know, that's something to keep an eye on now, since that's essentially changing everything how their, uh, their mobile hotspot uh, market was structured. Is this different than um, what we expect from AT&T? Because AT&T also would... You know, say, hey, we know you're using a hotspot. That's not really one you should be using. We're going to start charging you for that. Um, I, I could see the same ruling coming down on AT&T and anyone else who's limiting the use of hotspots. Mm. Just because, uh, according to these rules, it's supposed to be completely by the user's choice. If they don't like Verizon's service, they can go ahead and use a third-party service um, to access that bit of the network, that portion of the spectrum or whatever. So, yeah, I could this company, T-Mobile, Sprint, anyone who has something that can have a tethering plan, it'll, it, I can see this rolling down to them. Interesting. Interesting. All right. And I wanted to mention one more thing. Uh, Miss Bossy, no pants, actually uh, tweeted this at us uh, earlier today. It reminded me of this one. Uh, Hulu Plus just got added to the Apple TV. Yeah, I saw that. My, uh, my cousin actually posted on Facebook this morning that he was really glad that he had gone for his run. Uh, before he came home and turned on his Apple TV, because he obviously wasn't going to be moving from the couch for the next 72 hours. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, so it's on there, and apparently I, it looks like the subscriptions, you can pay for the subscriptions through your Apple ID now, hmm. which is something different. Because, I mean, th th that was one of those things, because I don't think you even can through the apps. At least you haven't up until now. Because usually if they have a subscription through through the app, then I think Apple wants, what, 30% of that subscription ongoing? Does that sound right? Sure. 
Okay. <laughs> but still, that's handy. That's handy. Um, so, and, uh, yeah. So that's all I got this week, guys. Um, anything else you want to stick out there before we head out of here? Uh, keep listening for Let's Play. There you go. Check out Let's Play. If you're listening to us live here, Tuesday nights, live.sogatronmedia.com. We start this show at 7 p.m. Eastern. Promptly. Sometimes. Promptly at 7 p.m. Eastern, right, Shut Chachi? your lying right? mouth. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think for if I had to guess, maybe eight weeks at this time we've done this, we started on time <laughs> out of 112 episodes, <laughs> probably uh, yeah. something like that. And then it just slides downhill. Hey, Chachi, where can people talk to us? We're on Twitter. Yes. Google Plus. Yes. Facebook. Yes. iTunes. Uh huh. Roku. Okay. Um. Everywhere, Good. we are everywhere you want to be. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just just look for the smoke signal. That's a big A. That's us. <laughs> da, da, da. We're right below that. <laughs> Frank, you know what? You're at insertcointobegin.com dot com at Fuzzwad. Wait, am I supposed to be saying that one? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> go check out his writings over there. Rob De La Creta, RobJDLC dot com. Chief yep. Wrangler of Unicorn Magic. Yes. Good enough. Good also, enough. Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com at Chachi says on Twitter. He likes to say lots of things on there. I say a lot of things on Twitter. Coining new phrases, I, making new friends, many I, enemies. I say a lot of things. And, I, I say too many things on Twitter. And I'm over at <laughs> Sorgatron.com. Uh, you can also check out my writings in the Sorgatron Media newsletter. Uh, I want to say what's up to everybody that might be joining us that found us at the Steel City Comic... Or not... I want to say Steel City Comic Con. That's not right. There should be a Steel City Comic Con. Uh, Steel City Con this weekend out in Monroeville. Um, it was a blast. It was interesting. We made new friends and booth neighbors. Um, hey, something else? Yes. Uh, you can find you on Tout at Sorgatron. You can find me on Tout at Fuzzwad. Oh, no. yes! We're touting! <laughs> We're touting. I'm touting things like ducks and geese that I find in Point Park and other random things and giving pep talks to Chachi in the morning. Did you get that? Did you get that, Chachi? I did, and I, as I tried to explain to you, because I don't use tout, <laughs> and I refuse to use tout, that by the time you were awake, my team had already been planning our next phase of attack. There you go. By the time you sent that tout, we had already sent out at least six emails. Yeah. I'd so you, sir, were behind. All right, we'll see what you're doing when I'm posting the show tonight. And that's the awesome cast. Thanks to our awesome chat room. You've I'll been be our awesome audience. I'll Have be, an awesome I'll be week. I'll posting articles. So proudly we hail <coughs> at the twilight's last week. I am going to put these lyrical dishes in your tushes. Hey, I got I got too much headroom. <laughs> hey, uh, can you use your uh, video up there to adjust me? <laughs> you have no headroom on the feed. I know. Yeah, yeah it I is. Am. It is. Okay. All right, let's uh, let's do a show before something else goes wrong. Oh, that's awful. They make fun of another Kickstarter project inside of their Kickstarter project video. It's, uh, <laughs> it's Kickstarter-ception, right? Wow. Yeah. That's not fun of... That's not fair of them. Okay. Shall we?